Thank you very much. I want to take you quickly through the, the presentation about this particular project called Jamil Observatory uh, in, in short. A quick one. I think as everybody else said, the focus of this project, uh, sorry, the focus of this project is largely in dryland areas, uh, particularly pastoral and agro-pastoral uh, areas. And, and the whole thinking of the project came from the thinking that why are we having drought always as an emergency? Why can't you question the entire landscape and architecture of drought responses? And that has led us to think of this thing called anticipatory action. It's another buzzword. It has to be unpacked. It has to be discussed. It has to be worked. So our research at the observatory is founded on this fundamental question of how do we approach research in a very different way? If we see increasingly, I think just from the examples of last drought, uh, these areas have really faced uh, extreme shock that really the increasing incidences of food insecurity, animal death and decimation, asset loss, I think uh, somebody in Sifa, who you said something about that, it's very important. But then it's not a very easy question, it's a wicked question. Sometimes because there are multiple people working at different levels, sometimes not speaking to each other, sometimes having different orientation in how you respond. Uh, some are in humanitarian, some are in research, some are in development, some have the authority and the government mandate to deliver the early warning and, uh, <clears throat> and responses. But then when you're looking at the project at, this, at the start, uh, we saw this very good opportunity uh, to use data and evidence to shape some of this conversation. If it is well targeted, it's timely, it's trusted, then there's very good potential within data. Still, this is the part which is worrying much, actually. I know the NDMA colleagues say they have robust system, but then I think I'll speak to part of the robustness and then part which is missing. Um, when we started, uh, drought is a very crowded space. So we had uh, many people in this space and we said as a research organization or a research project, we can't start from clean slate. We have to use people to take stock of what is missing, what can we do, how do we couch our research? The first part I think is this thing called data quality, accuracy, and, and, and you know, the risk profiling. When you go to our risk profiling, when you click my account, which is Marsabet, you see it entirely red. And yet I know 70,000 kilometers cannot be homogeneous. The heterogeneity within the landscape is not captured in the risk profile, and hence the targeting is a problem. So this is the important part to work on. I think the last mile connectivity, the early warning organized from here, taken to the people, does not speak to the people. When we did the conversation with the elders in post drought, they said none of early warning information matters to us because about trust. How is it generated? How is it delivered? Is it co-produced? These are important questions. Of course, translating early warning to effective early action is another thing. Every time early action or an action is several steps behind early warning. So and drought does not wait for that. It's just an equipping phenomena. So it has to change its form and, and manifestation. So you cannot catch up with drought. Every month you organize this thing and come, it's a different story. The project we target is different. Of course, the institutional arrangement and capacity to coordinate effective drought response is another important layer that is missing. Of course, the financing part. You talk about action without finance or limited finance against huge action required. Policy institution and processes gap is another critical area. And of course, all this evidence gap, uh, you know, with essential link to food security space is fundamental reason why we formed the observatory and what the observatory focus on. Who we are on, the, on this side, these are the consortium. The project uh, is led by University of Edinburgh with other partners, ill received the children, JPAL and Community Jamil, which is also our donor, and they double up as investment partner in this particular case. Uh, how we work, I said, I mentioned about the community of practice. This is a laboratory for the observatory. When we came, the whole idea of the observatory was based on let's set up a data platform that you click and get your information. But then we are told, I think this platform die when the project ends. You have to support existing platforms. So that made us to rethink our theory of change and say, how do you work with this community of practice? One, to get a well-targeted research agenda, and two, to work with people who matters in this particular space. And in our case, uh, we, we use the community of practice to ask the question. And I think we, in our first meeting in 2022, April, we had multiple questions, and these questions are not very easy ones to answer. It requires a structured conversation for a long time, whether it's coordinating drought, I'll speak to that quite shortly, whether it's data issue, and that, that question, we call it challenge question, because it's a big challenge. It's not something that you can do with one research and solve it. You have to have a collaboration 
you have to have thinking, you have to prioritize, you have to, you know, validate with the network and then generate more projects. The ultimate issue, of course, is to reduce vulnerability and, and, and build the re uh, resilience of the people. Of course, this is a quick, quick glimpse through the, the members. Uh, it's very hard to read some of them, but we have around 43 plus institutional members who are the core of the observatory. The challenge question I mentioned, we were given five at the beginning, uh, data for effective value action, financing effective value action, community coordination uh, as an important area, uh, local level actions. We talk about traditional early warning that does not speak to the contemporary early warning. We have local level action that has delivered in face of drought, then it's not embedded within the system. Trust in data is a very important area because data is a political thing and anybody will use the way they want to use it. Of course, this is how we organize the, the work, essential activities around the observatory is in these five area. Uh, basically dialoguing around this issue is an important thing we want to do. Evidence, basically actual research and some of the PhD academic research are within this. Collaboration, we tend to work with like-minded institutions to get you know, a challenging, challenging project, uh, what do you call it, impact, uh, impact collaborations, small grants, and, and et cetera. Of course, capacity is becoming a very important part of this because as we work with people and speak to organizations, capacity is one of the things that is really hindering some of these response issues. And of course, engagement, what we are doing now, policy, what we do at UNCCD and uh, sorry, COP and other places where we always make noise, is part of the engagement. Uh, so on the research, I will talk to all this is part of our clan members, uh, seven PhD students and two postdocs uh, working on different projects. Uh, all the PhDs, uh, right, I think all of them are from the region, uh, Kenya and Somalia. And then they are all based at the University of Edinburgh, the Global Academy for Agriculture and Food Systems. Postdocs are already in this room. We are working, these are our colleagues now. Uh, so there are quite a number of other thinking around these research projects. Uh, on the dialogue, of course, what we are doing now is an important starting point, but then we don't want to stop there. I think one of the fundamental challenge we have is we have conversation when a project starts, as Rama said, or when a project ends. One of the things we are thinking of is can we have like a dry land assembly where we have a sustained conversation about this issue? Anybody can put money in the pot. It could be one topic could be early warning, early action. Another topic could be on financing. Another one is shaping investment. It could be any that can get you can get from any project. So we're thinking possibly if you get the concept quite right and interest, then we want to have this sort of dry land route assembly or something around that. Of course, at the observatory, we have been running quite a number of mini dialogues. These are important questions that we organize 90, 90 minutes conversation and get some research ideas and agenda on it. And, and we want to do that. We've done quite a number. We're compiling the first ones and we want to invite people soon to speak about issues that really matters in this space. Of course, uh, we also want to engage in a, you know, a high level discussion or topical issues uh, in, in, in our community of practice meeting, which we hopefully will invite quite a number of you in May. And of course, the other strategic policy fora that we want to have conversation on, this is not exhaustive by any way, but this shows huge potential within the room to speak about this issue, either strategically or sometimes opportunistically, because this is what is happening uh, in, in, in the space which we are in. Capacity development, I mentioned this, a very important thing. Uh, we, when we started the observatory, we get a lot of demand from you know, government partners, universities to collaborate with us. And it was very difficult for us to coordinate this. So one of the flagship initiative we thought and, and which we announced at COP in, in Dubai is this thing we call Dryland Academy. This academy uh, is, is currently evolving uh, up to maybe mid this year. But the whole idea is, uh, is it has two, three, two or three strands. One strand is working with the international collaborators to deliver more PhDs and postdoc projects. The second one is working with local universities, basically in Kenya, Ethiopia, and Somalia, with a potential for providing this kind of blended uh, online, online, online courses. And of course, uh, the second strand is we want to have on job, what I will call dryland leaders program. Basically, taking young person into the organization working with them, it could be co-hosted with institution with like-minded, it could be in policy space. And one of the ideas is this, these fellows, when they go through this kind of training, will going to give us a discussion paper on a topical issues of interest. And we'll have a collection of topical papers at the end. Of course, with the whole idea is to have this uh, critical capacity, you know, among people working in Dryland, because that's where they, everything starts. Could be middle level manager in NDMA, this could interest these kind of people in the practice. And as I finish, 
collaboration. I think we have started already. We have joined submission with CRDD to IDRC uh, call on uh, climate smart livestock systems. And there are many, I think. There's a huge potential in the room to come together. Of course, the impact collaboration is small project that we're talking about. On, on each of the five challenge questions, we want to have an impact collaboration project where we put a bit of seed funding and then see how we can uh, pull resources around that. Uh, and of course, there are others uh, who are joining this, including the Adaptation Research Alliance and a few others who, who are uh, potentially coming into the collaboration. Lastly, I see Peter is coming closer. The engagement, it's a very important part. Uh, I think there is potential, uh, whether using the concept of the University of the Bush or any other approach, to learn from the people, especially under this Resilience from Below project, really. I've done this in the rangeland where we talk about ecological attributes interpreted by people. But I think resilience as interpreted by people is very important learning for us. Of course, we have many other platforms, COP29, African Climate Summit, if, we, if it happens again. And of course, uh, engagement in you know International Area of Camel and Camelids. There are many other forums that we can easily engage. And of course, we have a number of postdoc and PhD students who are currently active in research, and I think their output is going to give us very good important opportunity for, 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 for this kind of uh, conversation.